Cool. I think it's doing it. So hi and welcome to our well Atom um, JavaFX auto responsive layout. Today with me I have Jacob. Hi Jacob. Hi Almas. And today we'll be talking about your latest additions to the responsive layout in JavaFX. And you're going to explain to me how it works and all the cool stuff. But before we do that, just for the audience, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes. Um, so yeah, my name is uh, Jakob Jinko, or Jacob Jinko, if you want to pronounce it in English. Um, yeah, I'm from Denmark, Copenhagen. Um, I've been uh, working with software development and Java since 1999. So that's around 20 years now. And uh, yes, uh, just most most of the time I've been working as a freelance consultant, but then the, the, the last couple of years I've been getting a little bit into JavaFX and I really like how it is a very well-rounded, all-round, um, both UI but also media toolkit. Um, there is a lot of uh, functionality in there that I'm missing in, in, in other uh, UI toolkits. Also a lot of stuff that I'm missing in in web UI toolkits, like in, in web frameworks. So I really like that. And so I have been doing mostly uh, experimental work with JavaFX at this point. Uh, but um, but I hope to, I'm actually I'm actually trying to, to make a little application as well. Uh, maybe we can get it launched on FX Hub at some point or add yep. to it. But it's not, yes, it's not, it's not ready for that yet. It's, uh, it's still in the works. But so the uh, the responsive layout that I'm working on is actually for that application. Um, it's a little bit uh, such an like an information architecture application or like a like, like a dashboard application. So you will the user will be able to add some widgets and, and stuff like that. It's not just for dashboards, but it can be used for dashboards. But um, all right, maybe I should um, start sharing the screen now and uh, yeah show you a little bit about how what it does and sure. how it works yeah first let's Let, have a look uh what it does and then you can talk about the i just have, the to, I have stuff. to i have to find the right screen here screen oh yeah uh screen two now i'm sharing screen two is it visible uh yep okay so this is a it's a 4k monitor so if it's a little bit yeah small, you might want to increase the font on the yeah. text I might be, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure I will be diving into the code. Oh, fair enough. Okay. So much. Then no worries. But I can increase it. Normally, I think a size of 20 here is usually enough. Yeah, to... I usually go for 24 or somewhere around that. Okay, I can, I, we can do 24. When I make videos, I normally do 20 for the uh, like the text out here and then I do 40 no 38 or so for the text itself so it's really visible. right yeah I'm on 1080p so 4k might be slightly different yeah well let's try like this yeah, now it's can, much I, better yeah anyways I did not plan to actually dive too much into the code mostly explain well like show what is going on and then explain how this works. Let me just start the application. For some reason, the application always starts up on screen one, and then I have to drag it over to screen two. <laughs> yeah, that's it another... starts on the main one, or yeah. it thinks it's the main one. That's one of the uh, the challenges I still have to find out uh, with JavaFX is how to choose what to open an application and on. So I haven't figured that out yet. But uh... okay, so in general. Like with responsive layout, we usually have a, a number of widgets that we want to lay out on a, on a screen, and we want them to adapt to the size, both the width of and the height of the window in which these uh, widgets are being displayed. Mm -hmm. So if it's very narrow, then it will, um, you know, that's the way we see it on a mobile phone. And yep. then we have tablets, and we have um, probably like something like, 10, um, 16 10 tablets or 169 tablets and then we have um, also these ultra wide screen um, 
you know, which are, I think they are 21.9 or so in, in the format. So we have a, mm, a lot of yeah. different formats now. Um, and I guess, I guess many of these uh, screens, modern screens can also rotate. So you can have a 16.10 widescreen like this, but you could also probably yeah. be displaying something like this instead, right? Mm -hmm. So and we, I would like um, the application to be able to adjust the layout uh, dynamically to all of these screen sizes uh, because the way it's normally done with something like bootstrap or something like that is you have they create or they define this grid of like 12 columns across across the the screen and then you can decide that widget one should take one column or two columns or three columns or how how wide it should be depending on the size of the screen but um that only works if you already know ahead of time exactly how the UI will look, exactly yeah. which widgets you will have. But for my application, the which the number of widgets and also the uh, the default sizes of them will be much more dynamic. So let me just show you a little bit what it will look like. So the user will be able to add widgets to um, to this uh, panel here, and then the algorithm will try to use um as much of the available space as possible all right so as you can see we've added one widget here and it takes up all of the space now we add another widget of the same these are buttons of different sizes right so mm. now we add another widget you can see it splits the the this the, the space horizontally first mm -hmm. then we add another one there's still space enough and then we add another one and now you can see it starts splitting it on up to two rows here. We can try to add some more. You can see it finds out that there's space for another one up here, and then we can keep adding. Nice. And um, you can see now it's um, it's too big to fit in. For some reason, I need to resize the window just one time before I get the scroll bars the first time. I, this is another little thing I, I need to figure out. But anyways, as you can see, it um, it keeps um, grid trying to optimize the grid here according to some uh, to the to the algorithm. So you don't have to think too much as a developer about how the layout uh, how to lay out the 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 widgets ahead of time. You can see if yeah. I if I resize here, you can see it also changes the layout there. It finds out that there's space for four. Um, the widgets up there, and you can see at some point it finds out that there's space for all seven. Okay, so. Um, and that's great because as developers, we don't really want to think about this kind of stuff. We this, just want something to work. And exactly. JavaFX does just that. Yeah, this is totally, yeah, this is totally annoying to mess with uh, as a developer. So it took me some, it took me a while to figure out the right algorithm to get this to work. So this is not an algorithm that is built into JavaFX, but hopefully we can, uh, I mean, I have already shared it in a, um, in a GitHub repo and I probably need to, um, to polish it a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, the, the basics are there. So anyways, the algorithm consists of a couple of steps and now I will disable all of these steps here so we can see how it works. So basically what happens is that any widget added to the, to the grid here has a minimum size and a minimum, a minimum width and a minimum height. Mm -hmm. And so the algorithm uses the minimum width to determine how many rows are needed as a minimum to display the widgets. And so you can see here, without any of these features in the algorithm enabled, what we have is that the algorithm simply breaks the widgets onto uh, rows mm -hmm. according to how many can fit on you know on the rows right and so this is a, like a standard flow layout works in uh, in javafx i think i think it's called flow pane yeah um, i've heard of that yeah so this is completely standard but the thing is this doesn't look too good look at this right this is not a very nice um use of of space here yeah so like all of this space is wasted right mm -hmm. so basically what we would like to do is to balance the rows out a little bit so that instead of having 
three and three and one that maybe we have, uh, you can see three and then two and two uh, widgets here on the rows, right? Mm -hmm. um, then we would also like to not have all this wasted space out here on the sides, right? Right now, yeah. it's not use, it's not expanding widgets. It's only using their minimum width and height. So we can expand the child width like this. And we can expand the child height like this. Now we are using the whole screen. All of the space, yep. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, it's like all of the space available. Then there's this little pull, pull up children. Let me just show you what that is all about. I think we need to go to nine, nine widgets in order to see how it works. Or is it 10? I think it's, it's actually maybe 10. Look at this. I'm at now at 10 widgets. And somehow it forgot the. Uh, Scroll back and look at this. I'm at 10 widgets, and we get this jacked. Mm -hmm. um, we get this jacked um, grid because it's it's trying to balance out the rows. The, the thing is, when we expand the child width, it kind of looks a little bit confusing that we have three, two, three, two, right in the grid size. Yep. So this pull up children. Um, what it does is it will pull um, children up so that we kind of get the three three grid up here and you can see that so we get three three ah, and I two see. two okay this makes the grid like when you're scanning down with your eyes it's a lot easier to find the the widgets like this right so so that's basically how how it works and we can then expand the height as well so so that is the basics of of how all of this how this algorithm works at first it it um you can see it it applies all these um, actions in this in this uh, in the same sequence as the buttons are here are listed here first we balance the rows or well, first actually just lays out the rows right um, according to minimum widths mm -hmm. balance the rows pull up children then we ex expand the width and then we expand the height uh -huh. right so and this can all be enabled and disabled depending on what you want but most people will probably want it all all enabled. Yeah, because uh, we do want to occupy all the space available. Yeah. Like that's and that's the whole point of having space. Exactly. Right. So you can see how it actually it, it works quite nicely. You can see when you go to a small screen, it just lays everything out underneath each other, right? And then as we expand here, it changes the grid to kind of utilize as much of the screen as possible. I don't think we can get to 10 on, on, yeah, we could actually get to 10 yeah. in a single row, right? Um, so that's basically it. Um, it can also work with the, um, right now I used, um, in this example, I used widgets that are all the same uh, width and height, but it can, yep. also, can also work with different sizes. So let's, let me just take all of this away again, and you can see here now I am adding like this. So these are, you know, bigger and smaller widgets here, and then we can uh, we can we can like it's it still can kind of make some sense of this. You can see it tries to balance the rows. Yeah. And when we then we use all when we you know add or enable all of these features, you can see it. Much nicer. It this one, which was actually very small, is then expanded in height to fit the higher one here, right? Uh, you can see here these are different heights, but it says, okay, fine, you get this, you get the same height, right? As the tallest one. You can see here it kind of uh, lays it out very nicely here, right? And so it also works for for that. You can even see when we get to here, it 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 kind of fits within in the window now, right? So yeah, uh, two small ones and two big ones. So that's that's the basics of it. Um, what are the next features, if any, are you planning uh, to add? One of the things I would like to be able to add is um, stacking, um, for instance. Let's say we have two small, mm -hmm. small uh, widgets and then um, a large. Let's not expand the heights here, right? So here's how it looks. Instead of displaying it like these two next to each other, I would like to be able to, you know, because we now have one tall 
a widget on this row, I would like to be able to stack these two under each other. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no reason for them to, to take up all this space here when they could just be stacked under each other instead. Um, then they could uh, take up less space. <clears throat> uh, so stacking is one of the features I would like to add. Um, I wonder if it would be possible to have this expand height and width on a per node basis, rather per panel basis. For example, I want 20 to occupy as much space as possible, but I want the other two to, to remain remains. relatively the same size. Yeah. At the moment, it is not able to do that, but this is another feature that I have. That's what I'm okay. thinking in the future, yeah. whether yeah. Uh, it's a feature that we could have potentially. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a, a possibility. Uh, I think it would have to be a mode that you set on it that where you um, tell whether it should use like an even um, even expansion. Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah, because the way it expands right now, uh, it expands depending on um, let me try to add so that was not correct see it it expands depending you know, depending on their relative size here so mm -hmm. it calculates how much available space do we have here and then it it looks at these two uh, widgets here and say okay according to their relative size, they get a relative amount of the available space here. So the big component here, since it has a larger minimum width, the algorithm assumes that this probably would like to use more space than this one over here. Right. So it divides the space up between them according to their relative size. So you can see when we expand the children here, this one still gets a lot more space than this one, right? Right, it stay, so it's already possible with what we currently have. That's nice. There is some level of it, like if the minimum size of a widget is larger than another one, it will get more of the available space. So there is some level of adaptation mm -hmm. already. Um, so, but but there is not a like a there is not like a, a completely customizable um, setting where you can say, I never want this widget to expand. I only want twenty five to expand. But it could be a future addition, so I don't yeah. think we need to worry about that right now. No. So mm -hmm. there is already some level of uh, sophistication in, in the algorithm, and that's pretty much it. Cool. Uh, so um, you've published it on GitHub, and I assume we're going to add the link in the video description so that people can find it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, in the video description, right? Yep. Yeah, and uh, I will probably clean it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, just uh, so you know, I mean, if you are watching this in the future on, on YouTube or so, I probably have already cleaned it up. But if you watch it <laughs> the day after this is released, I probably have not yet cleaned it up. So that's all right. Please, please be patient. And then you'll be doing a more detailed video on this. Yeah, on I channel. will. Yeah, I will probably be doing um, uh, yeah uh, like a more explanatory video yeah. or like not more but like a similar style but maybe more condensed. Right. Um, okay. And yeah, and we can link to that video as well in the description. Yeah, and probably maybe if if some of the features that we have discussed are added, then I will explain them as well. Cool. Well, thank you for joining me today to explain the autoresponsive layout. And hopefully we'll do more of these videos in the future. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, to listen to my ramblings here. About, <laughs> no about worries, AI. it was a pleasure. Okay, cool. Okay, bye bye. Right. Thanks to the audience, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah. See you, everyone.